<laughs> yeah, we're live. 625. I'm early. But that's how we get it done. So now we're going to talk about the video that I'm working on right now. I'm about halfway through or so of the editing. And it's going to include, what else, more intake testing. And in this one, I ran the stock LS3 versus the Equalizer from Brian Tooley Racing and then the Trinity from Brian Tooley Racing. And then also on the Trinity, which the thumbnail that I have up right now is one, another test that we did while we had the Trinity on there is we did the big plenum volume. So they made a custom plenum volume uh, or a custom plenum for the Trinity intake manifold that they welded stuff together to increase the plenum volume. It also actually had a 125 millimeter throttle opening, which is also beneficial. And, uh, and we could talk a little bit just real quickly. So, cause people don't seem to understand if we do a test on an intake manifold and let's say we go to a bigger throttle body, like we've tested the 90 millimeter and the 102 or 105 or 112, or if we had a 125, we would test that because this particular one had a 125 opening on it. But when we go to a larger throttle body, one of the misconceptions is that a smaller throttle body is going to make more torque going to make more low speed torque. So, I mean, I understand the basis of that thinking, like why you would think, well, it's smaller, you know, more velocity, it's going to get in. But people don't realize that that's not how the air gets into the motor. <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't rush in through the throttle body and then go into the ports. It's drawn into the ports from the common plenum. And then the common plenum is just fed by the throttle body. If that becomes restrictive, we get vacuum in there. So if it's drawing more than you can flow into there, a lot of people are thinking more that, that, that motors and A motors particularly act like boosted motors where air is being forced in. That's not what's happening. And so a lot of guys have think, well, you know, I'm getting a lot of velocity in there. I'm getting a lot of airspeed or whatever. And that's just not what's happening. So uh, a throttle body doesn't dictate torque production. In fact, what happens more often than not, if we, go to a larger throttle body. You know, I like to match the throttle body size to the opening, to the throttle opening in the manifold. I think those two should be the same. I did some tests on the 90 millimeter throttle body versus the um, 102 and then the 112 on the performance design intake manifold, which is that, that was cool testing. Cause it's a, it's a, I did that testing more to see if people could actually keep, just keep their 90 and not also have to buy a throttle body in addition to the intake manifold. I like going bigger on the throttle body anyway, that way you don't have restrictions. And if you go up in power later on, you're ready to do that. But like I said, the misconception is the small throttle body was going to add torque, but actually if the throttle body, if a bigger throttle body gains power, what normally happens is the throttle body gains power as we go up in engine speed. So as airflow becomes more critical and more necessary, the gains offered by having more airflow from the throttle body, if the small throttle body was restrictive, increase. A lot of times, especially if we're making peak torque at a high engine speed, we also get torque gains. So, and, and you won't get any change in low speed torque, like, you know, at off idle or 2,500 or whatever. What you do get actually... It, and, and it's the reverse of this is that you get the perception that the bigger throttle body added a whole bunch of torque or added a whole bunch of response, which it does. Cause if you now open the throttle at 15% or 25%, you have a lot more airflow than you did with the smaller throttle body. <laughs> you didn't really gain anything. <laughs> all, all you've done is gain airflow there and where it is on the map was where the other one would have been on the map at a higher throttle angle. So, you didn't really gain anything. That's why we test on the dyno. If we test and we don't see any change in power from a bigger throttle body, it just me it doesn't mean that the throttle body is not good or that's not beneficial or that it doesn't flow more. It just means that the other throttle body at that power level and with the other things that we were testing it on, because you know, what if the intake manifold is restrictive? What if the heads are restrictive? What if the cam is really small for the size of the motor? You know, it can be a lot of other things that that say, well. Right now, the throttle body isn't the problem. So the, the airflow restriction is somewhere else. So changing the throttle body is not going to cure the problem because it's it's not part of the problem. Later on, if it becomes part of the problem and we change that, then we can make power. But just know that smaller throttle bodies, not going to add low speed torque. <laughs> throttle bodies are just basically simple airflow devices and they don't do that. But we're not talking about throttle bodies. We went off on a tangent. We're talking about plenum volume. So what Brian did, or what the guys at Brian Tooley Racing did, is they took one of their plenums, cut it 
welded on basically it looks like it looks to me like a section to a, a section of tubing a three or four whatever inch tubing and then welded it kind of you know now it has a big bulge in it and then they've raised the lid up and so they're able to add more plenum volume so i thought it was a cool test i'm like well you know <laughs> i'm always down to do plenum volume tests although i haven't seen big power changes from plenum volume I want it to work. I want it to do something. I want it. I want the wah, 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 wah. I want the resonating volume to actually change something. But once again, we saw, and the, I'm, I'm letting you in a, a little bit ahead of time on what's the, a little spoiler alert on the, the video that's coming up, but that didn't really do anything. I mean, it didn't, I think the change was one horsepower or something, but you know, when you're talking about 700 plus horsepower, and in this case, it's more than that. When you're talking about that level of power and then you're talking about one horsepower, it's that's just a repeatability thing. It's not, you know, it's 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 essentially the same. So you guys will get to see that. And that and that and I had that coming up. But the I'm sure what the, the thing that people are waiting for is I know that they want to see the Brian Tilly Racing intake manifold. Since guys are probably curious about what the difference is between the equalizer and the Trinity, maybe. And um what, what they really want to see, though, is how does how do these compare to, like, the high ram? Because we know that they're a lot shorter. So do they do what the high ram does? And there'll be a little bit of an explanation on why they do as well as they do, despite the fact that they have um, shorter runner ones. But, so it'll be an interesting discussion. It's, it's not something that you would a lot of guys would immediately think of, but it's part of the intake design, and, and it does what it does. So, that, so we've got a lot of cool stuff coming up there. I also... We ran this motor, uh, and actually they did half of this before I was there, but this motor was also run with, um, we ran it with a 255 Recport LS3 heads and a Trinity intake manifold, but it was also run with 245 Trick Flow CNC ported Cathedral port heads and a Trinity intake manifold. So we got a good test there. So there's lots of stuff going on there that um, I've, I've got a lot more stuff to come. So we got we got a lot of good data, and you guys uh, should probably like what's going on here. Everybody likes more data, right? Okay. Okay, so does the Ellis Race community need 125 millimeter throttle bodies for high horsepower NA applications? It's not really necessary on boosted applications because you're flowing air past it. And quite honestly, you can make about a million horsepower with a stock 78 millimeter throttle body, um, especially if you're using a stock 78 millimeter throttle body equipped intake manifold. Um, so you don't need gigantic throttle bodies for boost applications, but for NA applications, especially as we go up in displacement and RPM and power output, does the, does the community need that? So let me know what you guys think. And I can go up and see what's up here. Big boy plenum volume, Caleb. <laughs> uh, hello to everybody in the chat. Everybody's, in the house, I got better throttle response than big throttle bodies and intake. I know, I remember putting the 65 millimeter throttle body on my Focus. I'm like, ooh, this thing's really snappy. And by snappy, I mean much more difficult to drive, especially after I put the, we put one of the like puck clutches in it. It was just, it was miserable. Waiting on results from design excess intake for LS3. Have you seen this intake brand new to the market? Yeah, you need to look, that, that video has been up. We, that was two videos ago. We already posted the, the results for that. So take a look up on the channel and that video is up already. Air is pushed, not pulled. The plenum pressure is below atmospheric. Ah, there's always that argument. What's your experience with ICT 92 millimeter to 102 millimeter throttle body adapter? It allows you to put the bigger throttle body on there, but the, the choke point, the flow choke point is still going to be the smallest opening. How does throttle body compare to Venturi and a carburetor? 
it, it doesn't do that because it doesn't control fuel in any way possible. Mains in the house, if you increase plumbing volume, does that increase runner length as such or not with a 4150 saw? Not, it doesn't increase. Um, if you, Increasing plumbing volume has no effect on runner length. My question, what's the big difference between a tune port system that was used on Chevy and Pontiac in the 80s, early 90s, and the system that was used on the second gen LT1 motors? A big difference, a gigantic change in runner length. The runner length on the um, LT1 stuff is a, probably three or four inches or something. And then the runner length that was on the tune port motors is, I don't know, in the teens or something. It was It was pretty long. And so they were designed to make power at a much lower engine speed uh, on the tune port stuff. If running a three inch cold side, no need for bigger than a three bolt truck throttle body. Yeah, you can make a lot of power when you're blowing through it. If you've got, and, and the thing is, the more boost you run, the more pressure you have, the more that throttle body is going to flow. So if, it, if that throttle body flows, let's say it's an 80 millimeter throttle body and let's say it flows 800 CFM because then the math is easy. <laughs> If you add another atmosphere, hey, look, it's more and it's more and it's more. And it keeps and it keeps getting more and more. Think about changing the throttle body out on my 08 Ford F-150 468 valve or V8. So is it is a 46? So it's a two valve then, right? 08. I don't remember when they that's before they went to the three valve, right? Uh, question off topic and you guys can ask whatever questions you want. We're, we're not on, I was just having a discussion. I like to start off with some kind of discussion, but the questions could be anything that you want. Put a low profile oil pan on my LS. It was hitting the windage tray. Should I cut the windage tray front off or leave the entire windage tray? We have in the past on different kinds of oil pans had to section portions of the windage tray out. And so if it's hitting, you can section it. Uh, blue collar. So you spent an hour in the garage. Good. Like to hear it. Cars mostly back together. Clean and paint exhaust manifold. Nice. Got my PSI 8.8 .8 engine today. Is it a is it a new one? Is it a used one? Is it a junkyard? What is it? Makes my 8.1 look like toy parts. 09 went to three valve, but mine has a three valve style valve covers. Richard, you should build a super rich intake that takes a oh, <laughs> 10 inch, 10 inch throttle body, big throttle body. I was looking at those classic, uh, who is it? The low car ones, the classic intake manifolds. Those are kind of cool. We had one of those. In fact, if you look in my, um, my intro for my channel, you'll see, I have a, a photo of one of those. Cause there was, um, one of the, looks like the Rochester fuel injection version, I think is the one that, the one they had at West Tech. And they ran it. We didn't compare it to anything else, but it certainly looks cool. Does the fast LSXR intake have much more plenty of volume than the BTRs? I'm curious as to see how the BTRs compare to the fast. The comparison between a BTR and a fast would have nothing to do with the plenty of volume. In fact, I did a test on fat on a fast manifold, what we did because the plenums are interchangeable between the LSXR and the LSXRT, the, the bigger version, like the truck version. So I ran the motor the with the LSXR and, and the one or two millimeter throttle body and then took the lid off and then put the LSXRT on and then ran it. So all we did was change the plenum volume. Nothing changed inside. It was only a plenum volume change and there's basically no change in power. So it didn't really do anything. And the BTRs have much shorter runners, so they're going to make power in a different engine speed than a fast does. Have you have you performed any testing on the latency between hydraulic and solid lifters with an LS platform? We'd really like to see the way up of effort to convert to solid roller setup. The, the problem with that is that the number of people that, are running solid roller stuff in the LS community is like a small handful. Racers running really high RPM because we can run 8,000 or guys have even gone more than 8,000 with hydraulic roller setups. So solid roller stuff is very, very rare in the LS community. And I tend to not cater to the dozen or so people, or how many ever it is, um, because I'm not going to show them how to build race motors. There's lots of good guys out there that do that, and that's not what I do on this channel. 
have a pipe dream to put an 8.8 .8 and a 4L85E into a half ton. That would be pretty sporty. And then add just like seven pounds or something. It's got a fast, but it's too tall for my build. So looking at the BTR, making a low-profile knockoff version of the LSXR. That'd be hard to do, to make. Um, it, are you putting it in a car? Is that the problem? And is the fast... What kind of application is the fast too tall on? Is it the truck version that you have? Is the later LT1 system better than the tune port system? My 85Z28 had the cold start injector. Later tune port used a speed density. Uh, well, the problem with your LT1 is it's the LT1 uh, intake manifold is not interchangeable with the tune port. They have different cylinder heads on. In fact, it's a different engine family because it has different different cooling passages and it has it has a different direction for the cooling so they're not really interchangeable you can make it work with some a lot of work it's i don't like the lt1 as much as i like the tune port stuff not for a street car because for a street car you want lots of torque there are lots of other versions for the tune port that can make your z28 make more power. I have videos up on all the tune port manifolds that were available at the time. So I tested lots of them. So you could check out that video on the tune port stuff and see which one of those you like best. What is the best F-150 five liter coyote year to buy for the least problems? I have no idea. I'm not really hip on that uh, information. <laughs> I'm not part of that community. So I don't know. I don't follow that. Going on 10 p.m. in Maine. I think bar lifters in an LS. What's your experience with them? I'm leaning toward them next go around after a lifter failure and warrant trays in my other engine. You can try it. I'd, I mean, we have, there's lots of guys running the standard plastic trays. You just put, you know, spend the $25 on new trays when you're putting a motor together. The, the factory trays are not going to wear out for as long as you have your truck. <laughs> Mine have 325,000 miles on them and they're original. So uh, maybe if I took them apart, they would be sloppy and weak and I would just put new ones in, but they last a long time and they work. And link bar lifters are not necessary on any kind of like street or even street strip car. And a link bar lifter, I'd like to see what the weight is on a link bar lifter. Oh, it swapped into a WRX. Okay, that's why that, that you're having trouble having a fit. I have an 08 STS, STX pickup. I think the newer turbo engines are junk looking for a newer V8 motor. I was replacing them. I only had 95,000 miles of my old engine and they were shot. I, I never seen anywhere out with that kind of mileage. God, I'd have to have a lot of dirt and grime in the oil for to make that happen. How's our poll doing? Seven, does the LSXR race, LSX race community need 125 million throttle bodies for high horsepower NA applications? 71% saying no, we don't need that big throttle body. Sold my 82, I'm sure Z28, looking at an 84 Z28, could have the cross rim setup or carb system. Yeah, when did they introduce the L69? That would be a good one. A, a carbureted one would be cool to have. But the, you know, the, the Crossfire deal is, would also be kind of cool and unique. Although it does need, it needs work. <laughs> it needs some work. So we're going to go from top chat to live chat. Our cold can still thing for drag racing. Yeah, the guys at Hot Rod or at um, Engine Masters did a test on that, and cool cans definitely work on carbureted applications. I had to put on my truck, on my dually, we were getting uh, vapor lock because the fuel was getting so hot. We wrapped the fuel line in the engine bay because we were towing our race trailer and stuff. But so we wrapped the insulated the fuel line in the engine compartment with the um, like that plumber's foam pool noodles basically. And then we also ran a, a cooler, like a, a heat exchanger up in front of the radiator and then ran the fuel from after going through the cooler, then ran the fuel into the carburetor. 
just to keep it cool. So cool can, you know, it would definitely be helpful at, for drag racing. Richard, just my luck. It had about 60,000 miles on when I put a cam springs in it and installed it in my truck. I keep keep up on the old changes, but I have no idea what the first 60,000 miles. That's the problem with junkyard motors is you have, <laughs> we, we don't know what happened to it before we got it. Would you big bang a Magnum? Uh, I have one. I don't think we're going to run a big bang on it though. It would surprise me if that block in architecture wouldn't go to a thousand horsepower. Um, I mean, the, the 351 Windsor did, and I, I, and it would be so easy to make um, with a Magnum if you put decent heads on it, like if you put aluminum heads on it and put uh, a decent sized camshaft in it and an intake manifold on it. There's no reason it shouldn't be 450 ish or maybe more horsepower. And then, so getting to a thousand is not going to take that much boost, especially if you're any 85 on it. Uh, do you have a video on dual plenum setups? Yes, that would, that would be the best scenario to build a massive or two massive plenums. I don't know why you think more plenum volume is the answer, but but um, uh, dual plenum stuff can can be cool. I have run lots of, there's lots of videos up with dual plenum stuff. Um, Holly, we did theirs. We did the Edelbrock one. I have several that I did that we made custom ones for lots of different engine families. The when the OEMs design stuff like those lifter trays, they they're designed to last a long time. <laughs> Dries out for a Magnum single plane, Speedmaster, Victory, uh, Victor knockoff. I've um, does it Mopar perform? Does Mopar Performance make one, or is that just for the Hemi? The Hemi one I know is is not great. Um, it it does okay at high, really high RPM. It certainly loses a lot of power down low. I think I have a dual plane for the already for the Magnum because I have a 360, and we and I am going to run boost on it. I'm just not going to run a million, a million uh, pounds of boost. Oh, so I wanted to show you guys the. Let's see here. In case you guys can't see the, um, in case you guys can't see the thumbnail, this is what it looks like. So this is the big custom plenum, and that's their their Trinity intake manifold. It normally just has this piece right here. You can see where it's welded on that piece, basically down on this on this lower plenum part. And you can see, but now it's all bulgy. It even had a um, a little peephole. But you can kind of see that. So that's the one we tested while while I was there. We ran it, compared it to the to the stock one. Let's see, Richard, what do you think about the Summit Pro LS Stage Three Cam for a four hundred eight stroker? I don't know which one you're talking about. I've run. I have a couple of tests on some of the Summit Pro LS stuff, and all the ones that I've run have worked pretty well. Just trying to stay on the topic of plenum volume. <laughs> I don't think I ended the debate on it. I still have people, and, and I, like I said, there may be applications where this has to change. I, I've seen things change when, when we've done what we, when they have done things like port stuffers and things in um, tunnel ramp on carbureted applications, mostly on big blocks. Is when I was watching the guys do it at West Tech. And, and I, I think, though, that those had an effect on the signal to the carburetor. I don't know if just the plenum volume or they changed maybe the direction of the air from the carburetor into the ports. I don't think it was just a volume problem because I just haven't seen <laughs> big changes in plenum volume do like even any kind of change in power. Richard, do you ever talk about snowmobile engines? I don't have any experience with building them or running them. Restoring a 91 Ski-Doo Mach 1 617, 110 horsepower. Cool. 
we were just talking about some jet ski stuff last night. Apple just made 505 to the wheels, a Cam Dallas 3 and a Torque Storm at 5 PSI. I've run those Torque Storms a lot, and everything that I've run is <sighs> might, might be as high as mid 700s when it was really spun up. Um, I'm told that Steve Morris, and I, I kind of want to talk to him about it, has made a lot more than that. And I just don't know how with the given what I've run, I just don't know how that's possible given the size of the opening and the impeller blade and the speed that they're running and that kind of stuff. But, you know, I, I don't, I'm certainly not the end all be all for that. Wouldn't runner length have a greater effect on plenty of Yes, dramatically. So Can I get 450 horsepower from a 3.3 small block Chevy with an Edelbrock performer with a Holly 750 with the right engine combination? Yeah, the performer is going to be a little, um, a little bit restrictive. Um, but if if this was a, a 383 with like airflow research heads on it, I, I don't think that that would be a problem, and and enough camshaft in it. I don't see why that would be. And 450 is not a lot from a 383. I I see a lot. I see the guys a lot talking about whenever I because I have a couple of videos that I did on comparisons between you know LS motors and conventional small block Chevys, and you get the you get the diehard like conventional small block Chevy guys that are just nuts. Oh, that it's you know. You use the wrong, you know, you know, you shouldn't, you needed to use a different intake manifold. It's, it's the camshaft. It's the firing order. It's this, it's that. I'm like, look, <laughs> the point was that I ran the hottest 327 small block ever made in the muscle car era. And then I ran a stock, the lowest performance stock LM7 under the same conditions and the little truck motor their nine to one truck motor made as much power and as much torque as the uh l76 or l84 um 327 did it didn't do it at the same rpm range and it didn't rev out and i know which one of those two i'd rather have my point was that we've come a long way and <laughs> come a long way in power production and it didn't have a 250 camshaft in it it didn't have 11 to one it just has a lot better cylinder heads on it On my LS, I got 10% difference bank to bank on O2 sensors. You think it's leaking an intake site? Yeah, I would check and make sure that you don't have a... Um, uh, first of all, we see differences. We see variances side to side on the O2 sensors. But also make sure that you don't have... You make sure that all the bolts are, have not broken off. because It's fairly common on the stock exhaust manifolds. Make sure that there isn't a leak somewhere. Would sanding the bottom outer edge of a piston to increase clearance in a cylinder do any good in regards to scuffing the cylinder? No. Um, you don't want to rough up that surface. You would want to make it uh, the way that it came, um, especially if it was coated. What you want to do is start off with the right clearance. If you're scuffing the piston, if you're scuffing the cylinder wall, it's because the tune is wrong or the original um, piston to wall clearance was incorrect for the growth of the piston and the temperature that you're running. Uh, uh, Struner, that's right, leaky fuel injectors. If it, they, it, Any sort of vacuum leak, but an injector is also a good place to look. Last year for big blocks and Corvettes, uh, 72 or 74. They still had them in 74. I'm going to verify that, but I'm pretty sure. Last year for big block Chevy in the Corvette. Yeah, 74, that's right. Bam, 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 bam. 
I've often heard that a great set of cylinder heads will prop up a weak cam. Yeah, just look at the comparison between the Boss 302 and the DZ302. Really good heads on the Boss, way better than the Fuley heads, and a much smaller cam, like 30 degrees less duration. And then weaker Fuley heads, and then a gigantic cam on the on the small block Chevy. So you can kind of see how those go together. Can an LS468 and a stock deck dart block be reliable for a street strip with what what is carb fuel injection? I don't understand. The like a four-hole deal. It, that wouldn't be my choice because then you have to have some sort of carbureted intake manifold, which is not ideal for, for power. But yeah, 468 is not going to be a problem um, being reliable if you have the other things that go along with it and, and make it reliable. Not sure if you spoke about this yet. High Ram versus Super Victor 4500 for a 416. Take a look at the LS3 um, setup and you'll see, because we, we ran that on a 416. Is there any power change by tapering the intake tube before the throttle body? Just thinking that the intake runner length and taper is a power and power curve determinant. I, I've never seen anybody taper an air inlet tube. Usually it's just, a, it's either the, the tubing is either the same size as the throttle body is or the taper ends at the, um, you know, it reduces down from the inlet tube to the throttle body or steps up. Richard, I'm following your modular Ford recipe for a non PI 462 valve. What would be the realistic power goal if I add the PI heads and intake? but not port the heads. It's going to be a bunch less because the, the reason that we were able to make that power is because the heads, a stock PI head is going to be better than a non PI head, but a ported one is way better. Did you make a video on Honda double overhead cam and change timing overlap to see the changes? I've done endless amounts of, of Honda double overhead cams. I have two books on it that I wrote and there's lots of timing changes in there, but by, and you're, I'm sure you're talking about advancing retarding the camshaft. And I'm hoping that you're talking about a B series doing it on a K series is easy because that's just done on the computer and it's much easier to do that on the B series. It has to be done manually. And the way that we would do it when I was running this Del Sol, which eh, it's not there anymore. Um, when I was running the Del Sol and US Turing, or when we did the Bonneville motor, the Civic, is you have to change one thing at a time. So put the exhaust where it's going to be. Like we start with them both at zero and then run it and see where it is. And then we start advancing the intake and then we start retarding the intake. And then we, then we move the exhaust one or two degrees one way or the other. And then we go through the sequence again with the intake. You have to find out what the thing wants. And there is no absolute thing on what they do when you do this. It's, it's dependent on your combination. So you have to go through that sequence to find out what the combination of intake uh, advance or retard is relative to the exhaust advance or retard and which one produces the best power curve. Because again, the like we've done with a lot of these things, you might find one of these combinations adds power at the top and then loses power down low. Which which one of those are you going to choose? That's that's wholly subjective. Uh, do you like nitrous plates or direct injection? It would depend on how much nitrous I'm trying to inject. The um, individual fogger systems, one for each cylinder, definitely improves um, cylinder to cylinder distribution. And that can become a real problem with lots of different kinds of intake manifolds. Like with the EFI stuff, I have a video up on running the 5.3 truck manifold. And we, we did 802s in it to find out what the distribution was like both NA and then after we added nitrous and that it made me realize that this is why we have had this for years and years and years, this self-imposed limit of how much nitrous we want to inject into these manifolds, irrespective of getting a backfire and blowing the manifold to smithereens. Um, the distribution is not great going through that truck manifold. Having the fuel go through is really the problem. The nitrous as a gas is not that big a deal. It, it kind of finds its way the way air does. 
And so the ideal situation, what a lot of guys did back in the day, and they're probably still doing this, is that you inject nitrous, um, you run a dry setup. So you just inject the nitrous before the throttle body and then add the fuel with the injectors. Because then all the cylinders, if you got the same amount of nitrous to all of them, which you would hope, but, but may or may not, but you could add fuel individually through cylinders and, and make it all right. You can do that with, with fogger setups. And then if you're going to run a lot of nitrous, like it, let's say that you're going to run a 250, 300, 400, 500 shot of nitrous, I would definitely go with um, individual port injection. How to build Honda Power Dyno proven results. I have a copy. Yeah, there's a couple of them. One was an SA Designs, like a CarTech one. The other one was uh, HP Books or something. I voted yes because I want to see and have access to huge throttle bodies. I like big throttle bodies and I cannot lie. Uh oh, we're stepped, we stepped up our game. Does the LS race community need 125 millimeter throttle bodies? 35% are saying yes. I voted yes because I want to see. So intake closing time matters. It can. <laughs> <laughs> because the amount that, like when we were talking about with the Honda, the amount that you advance or retard the camshafts and how they work are also going to be dependent on the cams that you're talking about. Are you talking about the stock B30 cams, the the ITR cams, the, the Civic Type R cams? Um, are you talking about aftermarket cams? You know, there's the sky's the limit on the number of things you could change there. You think it would be possible to make a Y harness to make a crossfire intake work with a TBI truck ECU? I don't know. I, I'm not familiar enough with the factory stuff. I know that all of those early ones, the I know that from talking to the guys at Turbo City back in the day, because they got, um, I remember them working on a dual throttle body setup for trucks because they wanted to run, they wanted to get more airflow in. And the, and the way that they could do that was to run two of those throttle bodies, those factory, tr uh, the big block throttle body assemblies. And they could get both of those to work with the factory ECU somehow. This was way back. Um, so I'm thinking if they could do that, if you had somebody that had enough knowledge on that, that they probably could get the, the crossfire to work because that's two throttle bodies too. William, what was your blow through carburetor thing? I don't know. Why would you want to limit yourself with an archaic TBI, ECM, and EPROM? The same reason that I want a 2.2 all stock Dodge Omni. It's cool. And and, and I and I <laughs> forbid myself to do a you know a um, 2.4 liter K-series motor in it, which it would be, you know, even funner. A 400 millimeter throttle body, you can. You can make the throttle body as big as you want. Or just, you know, you could you could do a tri-power setup where you have three 90s or three 105s or three 125s. The the crossfire though is is a nostalgia thing too. And I would love to have like an 84 Corvette or a Z28 or something and have it have the crossfire set up on it, but just have it like you know stomp people. <laughs> that would be cool. I like the way that the air cleaners and stuff look on those. Because I, I, I always like the way that the Z28, 69 Z28 air cleaners look like, because that's just cool. So when you open the hood, one carburetor, eh, that's okay. Two carburetors, oh yeah, that's really cool. Big throttle wise, you don't fold or bend. Are you having problems with that? Like during D cell or something?
Richard, have you ever seen one of those intakes? Yeah, I have. And, and I know what you're talking about there. <laughs> I just think of them as a raised port. They're just tiny. I saw a video where a bigger carb reduced power down low. Will a bigger throttle body do that? No, we had that discussion earlier. The, the throttle body has no effect on low speed power. It doesn't improve velocity. The bigger carburetor, because it relies on a signal for fueling, um, having too big of a carburetor can reduce the fuel signal and can reduce performance on a carburetor, but that doesn't happen on a throttle body because we're not asking it <laughs> to supply fuel with a fuel injection. We're telling it. What's the best three exhaust system for power and torque between an X, H, and no crossover for a V6 and V8 motors? I don't know that they'd be the same for a V6 and V8. And in the test that Engine Masters did on the H pipe and the X pipe and everything, it, there was actually very, very little difference in power. Different, definitely a difference in sound. Like I like the X pipe. I think it sounds great, but you're, you're not going to see magic horsepower with any of those things. Are quad two barrel setups a thing? Yes, you could do that. James, you're just <laughs> almost just in time to leave. <laughs> we started early tonight. Uh, oh, the yeses are up to 38%. All of the big throttle body guys stepping into play now are in the house. I always wanted to do a, um, a tri power EFI Pontiac. Dale LQ4 706 head stage four summit turbo cam or leave 317 heads on a six liter S10 street strip 8.8. Uh, I would change the cam. <laughs> I wouldn't have a stage four in it, but I would leave the 317 heads on it. I always wanted an old 60s, 70s cross ramp intake because of the look, but modern intakes with a single four barrel will match or exceed the, their peak power. And obviously better through most of the curve. I, I, I need to go back and look. That data is available. So I should look and see what the results were when they when Freiberger and, and Brule and Dulcich ran a bunch of those intake manifolds. I don't think that they had a factory uh, like DZ cross ram, uh, an original one. They had a bunch of aftermarket versions, I think. I took a picture of one of them and I posted but I'd like to see how they did compared to the single four barrel stuff. I'm, I'm all in for people doing stuff just cause it's cool. It's, it's not, we're not always about, you know, what's most efficient and what's going to make the most power and what costs the least and all that stuff. Life isn't, shouldn't be just that. Hello, I've been here a while. How's the trophy four-cylinder going? It's ready to run. It's ready to test. It is officially ready to go on the dyno. Has anyone adapted an LS throttle body to an older, small twin blade manifold like a TPI? You'd have to make the opening beer. Like the first uh, TPI, I think, has a big throttle body like that. Off topic, while towing an L92, what oil and coolant temps are considered too high? Coolant, I'd like to stay under 215, but sometimes creeps up to 220. Oil, I'm not sure, but need to try and monitor. You should be able to monitor the oil temperature, but none of those seem high to me for towing. In fact, they seem more normal for regular usage because GM um, doesn't even turn on their secondary fans till that high or higher. 
wonder if we're going to see more mod motor. <laughs> it's been too long. Drop my pork chop on the carpet. Uh oh, covering dog hair. Now it's got. Now it's a sweater. <laughs> it's wearing a mohair sweater. Nothing worse than a pork chop with mohair. Thirty-seven percent. Percent. Percentavos. A V10 mod motor. That would be good. I need to take um, Bart up on the one he's got. I also have the L83 from Brian Tui Racing down there. I need to run that. I got lots of stuff to run. I'd like to see a 366 big block. I don't I haven't seen one of those in a really long time. What would be the oh my god pullover and like cool down temps on coolant oil? It wouldn't be any of those. Adrian, since the stock rods will hold up under boost, any sort of forge rod, as long as it was machined properly, is gonna work for really high horsepower stuff. That's the way I look at it. Well, what rod is the best? Well, you don't have to worry about what rod is the best because you're not making best best rod power. Some big Cummins engine set codes for engine oil temps at 255. I remember the oil temp and the trans um, temp in my 85 Z51 Corvette um, getting pretty high when I was road, road coursing it. Can engine oil temperature decrease the power output? Actually, as you get the oil hotter and hotter, um, unless you got it so hot that you had a problem with um, the lifters not staying pumped up, uh, hot oil is really good for making power. Hot oil and cold water is really good for making power. And you can also run, um, uh, your, and if yours is a factory motor, probably already has it. You can run oil coolers on it. Yeah, I wouldn't like to see stuff get to 250. Did you see the engine masters make more power with 2050 than 520? Mm, I never saw that. What about 379 big block Fords that came in F600s? I've never even seen one of those. I don't know how they could make more power with 520 or with 2050 than 520. Um, there should be pumping losses associated with that viscosity change. There should definitely be pressure changes too. That seems odd. <laughs> uh. And this, so they did oil tests. They did spark plug tests. <laughs> sounds sounds familiar. I don't I don't know if I even get the the motor trend channel. Run 2050 in the VW, it'll overheat. So, where's our poll at? 62% saying no, 38% saying yes. So, did you guys take a look at the, the photo that I showed you of the plenum? Doesn't, doesn't, not only did that thing, here's the odd thing, not only did that thing have a larger plenum, but it also had a larger throttle body. A larger throttle opening, a 112 millimeter throttle opening, or it had a 125 millimeter throttle opening, 
but we had 112 millimeter throttle body. So everybody chime in now. Oh, it was the reversion and eddies and turbulence and. Uh, uh so the 2050 made more power than the 520 at elevated temp they got the oil temperature hot when they did it did they break down the other oil? i have to ask relay about that how, how that happened i wonder what he's attributing that to i'll have to take a listen see what's up see what's what Is this going to be the regular schedule for a while? I'm thinking about trying to starting to do it earlier. Three six six four twenty seven truck head mods and tests would be nice <laughs> for all the guys running those motors and trucks. Are those things even on the road anymore? All of, for all the tall deck people. Yeah, it's supposed to be getting really hot. I was looking at the weather for the days coming up, and it's it's going to get pretty warm. So you guys make sure you're safe and hydrated. Very important. I took uh, Bruno for a run today. He's really good. Milo's getting a little bit too old for that kind of run that I took him on. Central Florida. Yeah, it's supposed to be bad from basically the whole lower part of the United States. I think that they were showing 100 and I mean, in, in I know in uh, I forgot how many they've had like half a month already over 110 in parts of Arizona. I think it's supposed to be 105 or six or something here pretty soon. It's getting warm. And we had a power outage today, which was cool. Not. Still 101 here right now. Oh, heat wave, yeah, it is. It's supposed to be coming. It's not good. And then they're getting, uh, like up in Vermont, they're getting uh, torrential downpours and floods and stuff. Not good, not good. So I'm going to close out our poll at 60. Oh, we're creeping up, 39%. Well, the 125. So we'll end our poll there. Two more minutes. Two minutes more. So we're at 5255. So it's officially a two minute warning. The Omni will be back, so I, I'll have a poll for you guys tomorrow on, on uh, should I take the Omni to a particular event. Yeah, Vermont, that's what I heard, the lots of flooding. 85 in Arkansas. Yeah, today was only 85 or 86. At least it was, the, I saw that when I was out. Raining here every other day. Yeah, north, up in the north, and, and um, Vermont, Massachusetts, New York, parts of New York. Lots of, um, lots of flooding. Two minutes. One more minute. <laughs> it's one minute has gone by. 53.57. My ticker's going. 90 in Iowa. Hundred and eight. Thirty Celsius. I have no idea how much that is. <laughs> Hundred and nine in Northern California. Yeah, okay. One oh nine. Yeah. I knew that it was a buck and change, so it was a lot. 
That's that's gonna be on the warm side. We'll take the dogs over to the pool, do some swimming. Gotta get up early to go hiking. <laughs> I can beat that. One ten. <laughs> and we have ten seconds left. <laughs> And on that note, it is time to go. I will be back tomorrow. I'll put up that BTR. Who wants to see the BTR versus the high ramp? Which one of those makes more power? I'll give you a hint, but not till tomorrow. Bam, 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 bam.